Everybody, and welcome back to AEG's podcast. Today, we have a very special guest who's a good friend of our co-founder and dear friend, Cal Nichols. I'm delighted that you could join us, Aresh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine, for uh, for having me. It's a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Why don't you start with a short intro as to what you're up to and what Aero Hygienics does? Absolutely. Um, Catherine, we were um, founded in uh, 2020 at the onset of the uh, pandemic. Um, out of an industry arguably uh, impacted the most, uh, the transportation industry. Um, my co-founders and I are all uh, technologists, which cut our teeth in in the aviation industry uh, in senior roles. So we had a front row seat to watching this cataclysmic event unfold unfold in front of us. And we really felt compelled uh, to find a uh, sustainable method of disinfection to aid the industry that was pretty near and dear to our hearts, uh, but quickly discovered that um, the disinfection as we know it uh, really needs to evolve and really needs to move away from your traditional chemical methods. And um, through a litany of research and some incredibly smart advisors that uh, that we have on board, we ultimately landed on um, a technology, a UVC technology that's been incredibly stable and a very proven technology, uh, which turns out to have some pretty broad applications Um that stretch beyond uh, what we could have imagined. So yes, that's that's how our hygienic started. That's awesome. And how big is your team now? Uh, we're slightly under fifty. Excellent. And all across uh, Canada. Uh, across Canada, we've got uh, presence in uh, well globally. We've got presence in in the UAE. The, yeah. So we're we're um, we're stretching globally. <laughs> I'm glad to but hear. Ma- it. But mainly in Canada, we're very proudly Canadian company. Yes. No, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you, Arash. Okay. And how does it, how does your method differ from other disinfection methods? Yeah, well, that's a that's a great question. Um, but but let's look at disinfection today. I mean, the golden standard pretty much is is manual cleaning. Uh, you know, someone goes around, takes a wipe, uh, uses chemicals or a spray, and uh, of course tries to be as thorough as possible. Um, but and at the end of the day, may or may not record that they actually did that event. So. Are they actually cleaning is the the question in mind. Um, I, I mean, you read some of the efficacy labels on these wipes or uh, on chemicals, and often for them to have a level of efficacy, you need to either scrub them for a certain period of time or let them sit for a, ser- a certain period of time. So for example, we were doing research in an acute care hospital, <clears throat> and there was some very clear evidence, uh, Catherine, that when, when using manual cleaning, someone wiped a surface that was contaminated, and, um, you know, didn't do a really good job, moved around and actually contaminated an uncontaminated surface that was, you know, a very high touch surface. So prone to a lot of interaction. So what do we have here? We have, um, you know, people right now that are using chemical only solutions that are hazardous and damaging to uh, staff and material that can be very error prone and have, um, you know, weak reporting and accountability associated with that. So we've essentially solved all of these problems with our solution. So uh, in order for the, we've solved the chemical problems by UVC. We have, UVC does, is not at all a chemical solution. So it it doesn't, uh, you know, have any byproduct. It's fully green. Uh, In terms of the damage to materials that chemical causes, I mean, uh, you know, fortunately coming back from an aviation background, uh, we did a mind-boggling amount of testing, material testing, to get approved for you know um, being used in an aircraft environment. So, um, uh, you know, our testing has proven that there's uh, no material damage. Um, and just to to let you know, only two percent of UVC companies have actually done material testing. Um, um, you know, uh, and on top of that. Um, the fact that it's error prone. Now we've we've really uh, solved this problem with some very sophisticated and wicked smart robotics that has taken the um, the component of the human component out of out of this equation, right? Um, and uh, all of that to say is uh, this is twenty times faster, like uh, than manual cleaning. So our solution has has not, is not only saving a lot of time, but has. Uh, decreased dependency on personnel, um, which at the end of the day, I mean, we really want to make sure that we're stretching this this finite he- healthcare dollar as as much as we can. So this is really the differentiator of, of our product. I love it. Tell me more about the robotics. So is it a robot that comes into the room and makes it all happen? Or what does this mean, robotics? 
Yes, it's absolutely. So we are our robots called Ray the robot, uh, <laughs> and uh, it uses a, a gamut of sensors, um, some pretty sophisticated three D lidars, and for the first time in history, um, we can actually. Um, map exactly and tell you exactly where we're disinfecting. So Ray provides this visual map of all the surfaces that have been irradiated and to what extent. So this turns into a little bit of a physics equation right now. And um, what we're doing is actually training Ray uh, by using some basic AI algorithms to um, for Ray to find the best path to maneuver in a room. So Catherine, the idea is um, you essentially place Ray in the room and hit one button. Ray kind of maps the entire room and finds out um, what the best optimal path to take to disinfect um, at a given irradiance. So let's say, you know, you want to kill um, a C. difficile or a hospital acquired infection. There's an acquired radiance for that. You set it to kill at that acquired radiance. And then you get this visual map of, oh, okay, here are the surfaces that I've exposed and I've killed. So it's really fascinating, um, fascinating what, what Ray is capable of doing. That's cool. How big is Ray? Um, oh, that's a good question. Ray's uh, slightly under five feet um, and about uh, uh, maybe about two feet wide, uh, but it's designed. Yeah, it's it's a quite a nimble uh, little robot designed with uh, being able to maneuver in tight, tight spaces. So um, it's uh, it's quite maneuverable. Yeah. Cool. Um, I assume this is expensive. It sounds expensive. Um, well, no. So the 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 good the good portion of this is when when we started off in um, in the aviation space, we were very very mindful of the economics of of um, particularly what COVID had done to the um, to the economics of the aviation space. So we built and designed a product with that in mind, um, which has turned to be incredibly disruptive. Um, in the healthcare and medical space, because it's uh, an incredibly high performance product, but it's priced at a at a point where it's very pal palatable for the for the healthcare um, industry. Um, so, yeah. So you would see that in a budget for Alberta Healthcare, as an example. Absolutely, absolutely, and there's um, there's um, uh, you know a litany of tools that we have at our disposal that allows us to operationalize some of the expenses instead of um, you know uh, the capitalize. Uh, so if if an institution wants to um, you know lease Ray, for example, uh, oh. these tool and debt mechanisms are, are at our disposal to be able to do that in, in Canada. Would you be willing to do a pilot if we were interested in doing that in Alberta? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this is. Uh, a, a global problem and um you know uh it would absolutely be a pleasure to um to do a pilot in in alberta for sure do you have examples of where you have ray in other hospitals in the world yeah so um i mean i specific i can't make uh we we've got some <laughs> ndas with clients but oh. we do have uh we we do have I can uh, Ray running in a acute care uh, facility in in montreal um and um the uh, the bigger portion of that, their problem was they're much like a lot of other hospitals, they're over capacity, right? They're, um, they're having, I mean, healthcare has been disrupted in, in many ways. So um, this particular um, acute care hospital is using it because their turnovers in emergency rooms as yeah. a result of chemicals mm -hmm. are so high that it's actually uh, impeding people from coming into the emergency room. So mm -hmm. uh, what, what Ray and uh, our solutions have done is essentially decreased the turnover time. So the cleaning is much quicker in a room, which allows emergency rooms to to have more input so mm -hmm. this is essentially relieving the stress uh overall on the uh, on the healthcare system right mm -hmm. that makes sense to me sounds like yeah. you could save money by having ray in it if there's a leasing option can you give me an example of how much it would cost to lease ray in one situation per month yeah absolutely um it's slightly under 600 dollars um per month to oh my uh, gosh to to lease ray and that's full time yeah. like you could you could run them 24 7 that's right. That's, That's right. Amazing. I mean, it's it's designed to be in critical operations. Absolutely. Yes. That's amazing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you can see how I go down a rabbit hole. This is why I never stick to script when I'm passionate about this. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what happens with curtains that are my my dear friends? We um, had surgery at the beginning yeah. of January. Unfortunately, both sur surgeries went sideways. 
they're still, we're now what, April 6th, and they're still in hospital. But they've given me some horror stories of what's happened in terms of disinfectant or the la lack of disinfectant and even walking in there and how it smells. It's like, oh, anyway. Um, so they've told me that those curtains that are literally like touching their bed, they've learned that they get washed once a year. Would that be accurate in your opinion? Well, I mean, I, I can't really speak to particular, um, you know, cleaning methodologies. But what I can tell you is um, uh, there there are a lot of high touch surfaces in, in hospitals that um, or in, in, in the healthcare environment that um, pathogens can um, live on for months. Um, in, in the case of, you know, Cetaphil or some of these incredibly um, potent bacteria, they can stay on surfaces for a month. So the continuous treatment of um, or the continuous exposing of, of UVC to these surfaces eventually reduces the viral load and the, the bacterial load to a point where if you were to contract something, the, the odds of your body dealing with it are much higher than than if you were to. So um uh, the, these are the things that we're trying to address, uh, Catherine. Yes, um, you know, do curtains get changed once? If, I, I don't know, but uh, um, this higher turnaround and surfaces that that have a lot of touch and are exposed to these are these are primarily what what the UVC can be extremely potent against, and, and curtains too. I mean, how can you take curtains and off down and wash them every year? Yeah, so impossible. there there is a there is a component of of that that. Um, that's incredibly useful, yes. Thank you, Rush. Thank you. Yeah. What are some of your key challenges that you're seeing now and what you're projecting in the near future for your organization? Yeah, I mean, um, we some of the key challenges come kind of uh, what what ended up happening is transportation really helped us um, uh, because there was a lot of similarities with uh, you know airline operations and and the medical space. I mean, both of them are incredibly high standard uh, environments, right? So you need to build build these units with a lot of um, with a lot of operational uh, kind of knowledge in mind to be able to you know easily integrate into these environments. So that the challenge is. Uh, you know, not not the efficacy of UVC or we know that works. Um, it's how do you integrate into these um, complex operational environments and um, provide a value add. And where we've been able to um, do that is by way of using our innovative tech and our um, our platform, our incredibly sophisticated digital platform to be able to provide that um, that value add as well. So Very cool. Thank you, Arash. Yeah, I'm definitely. curious about, as you as you can tell from our previous conversation, I really love partnerships wherever possible, collaboration wherever possible, less duplication. I'm passionate about that. Tell us about the partnerships or collaborations that you've had with organizations and how is that going? What does it look like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> our primary focus is, um, Catherine, in healthcare. We believe, I mean, the best time to impact change is when there's mass disruption. And I think... Um, we've seen mass disruption in in healthcare. So a data driven hygiene solution is is a very big part of decreasing this overall uh, stress uh, on the healthcare system. Um, you know, but we're we're also we've we've seen demand in long term care in schools and sports. Uh, but innovation in healthcare is is good for business. I think keeping people safe and healthy stretches this finite um, healthcare dollar, right? Um, mm -hmm. And eventually keeps hospitals and emergency wings open, um, preventing shutdowns, uh, you know? So um, this is uh, where we're trying to collaborate is with with institutions, with large institutions that could have a bigger impact on, on, on this, right? So uh, hospitals, um, you know, the Ministry of Health, some of these government um, arms that, that we're really trying to reach out to um, and gain some visibility. So we do need a lot more help in, in, that, in that area, but uh, um, uh, that's where we're fo focusing on right now. Very cool. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. How about how do you create a culture of innovation and constant improvement? 
Yeah, the um the roots of our company uh, are purely uh, based on innovation, and I mean we take pride and we essentially take a, a innovation to a finished product, and that's that's what we foster. But um, we're also very very strong believers in in research and continuous development, and we look for very very creative ways and have have actually been able to leverage um, the government in ways of helping us with some R and D. The National Research Council has been instrumental at the onset to help. So it is a very innovative type um, a mindset that that we look in even when we're we're hiring uh, we're hiring our staff. So um that's how we fuel fuel the uh, our, our our company with the innovative vein. <laughs> yes, I can imagine every hire is critically important with an organization like yours. Yes. Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you, Rush. No as the globe looks at, well, as already much more sensitive to infectious diseases, how are you going to be able to stay on the forefront of all that? What are some of your ideas? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, uh, seamless hygiene, the seamless hygiene experience in everyday living um, is really um, the goal. That's, uh, you know, we're, we're in pursuit of a future where, uh, data-driven, sustainable, uh, and when I mean sustainable, like non-chemical disinfection, um, it will be seamlessly integrated into day-to-day -day living um, and safeguarding um, the health and well-being of everyone. So um, we're really focused on three components to achieve that. So precision robotics is is one of them. Um, I, AI is a very big facet of of helping um, that component out. And um, I, I'm sure you've been following the news, but uh, AI is actually exploding on a, a, a very, a very exactly a huge, a huge scale. And uh, the third component of that is UVC. I mean, UVC um, being a clean form of disinfectant that this, the sun actually uh, irradiates, but our ozone blocks. I mean, if our ozone wasn't there, there wouldn't be real life. So um, UVC also being a part of that picture. So that trio, I think, is going to uh, drive us forward in, in, the, in the near future um, uh, to succeed in, in the space and to impact some pretty big, uh, big change in, in hygiene. Very cool. I love it. You are on the forefront of something super cool. Well thank done. you. Thank you. We think so too. Thank you. Five years down the road, what does it look like for you? Um, a, a global, uh, a global uh, company with um, being a part of critical infrastructure, especially in healthcare, um, with a robust uh, digital platform um, to maintain um, maintain that information. Um, and also provide it back to to um, uh, the community because I think I mean sharing that data is is critical um, for um, for for the globe essentially to to know how this yeah this play pans out. I love it. Well done, Arash, and thank you so thank much you. for your work in this area. I'm delighted Absolutely. to have met you. I'm so glad that Cal introduced us, and I'll do everything that I can to continue um, singing your praise everywhere. Catherine, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Arash. Everyone, check out this cool initiative. Tell everyone that you know, especially Minister Coffin. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day.